They told you creatine was just for bodybuilders. That it's a powder you toss into your protein shake, chug down post-workout, and forget about. But what if they were wrong? What if behind the gains and Jimbro endorsements, there was a deeper story one that whispers through your neural circuits, ripples across your kidneys, and pulses through the very essence of your muscle fibers? Let's start at the point most people do, in the gym, somewhere between the clang of iron and the mirror selfies. You see a man, mid-40s, lean but soft, hesitating in front of the supplements aisle. He's heard of creatine, maybe even tried it once in college, but now, decades later, he wonders, is it worth it, and more importantly, is it safe? What he doesn't realize is that creatine is not a modern invention. It's not a fad, it's not a steroid. It's a naturally occurring compound, synthesized in your own liver, pancreas, and kidneys, and stored primarily in your muscles. It fuels something called ATP adenosine triphosphate, the energy currency of life. Without ATP, your muscles don't move, your neurons don't fire, and your heart doesn't beat. Creatine is the silent workhorse behind the curtain, making sure you run, lift, think, breathe. But when you supplement it, when you increase the levels beyond your body's normal supply, that's when things start to get interesting. And dangerous, and potentially life-changing. Let's talk about the brain, not the muscle-bound version of intelligence you see on motivational posters, but the actual gray matter wet, electric, and endlessly complex. Your brain uses immense amounts of energy. In fact, although it accounts for only about 2% of your body weight, it consumes roughly 20% of your energy at rest. That's a staggering number, and this energy, it comes from ATP. Now imagine giving your brain more fuel, more raw material to produce ATP. That's where creatine comes in. Multiple studies have now shown that creatine supplementation may enhance short-term memory, processing speed, and even resilience against neurological disorders. A double-blind placebo-controlled study out of the University of Sydney found that participants who took creatine for six weeks showed improved working memory and intelligence test performance. In other words, creatine didn't just make people stronger, it made them smarter. But here's the catch your brain's response to creatine depends on baseline availability. If you're vegan, vegetarian, or someone who avoids red meat and fish natural sources of creatine, your brain may be running low. Which means supplementation might have an even more dramatic impact. That fog you feel mid-afternoon, the forgetfulness creeping in as you age. Maybe it's not just stress, maybe it's cellular fuel starvation, and maybe the answer has been sitting quietly in a white tub on a dusty supplement shelf. Still, not all is rosy. The brain is a complex organ, and overfueling it can backfire in some people. Anecdotal reports include mood swings, insomnia, or anxiety flare-ups when starting creatine. Why? Because creatine can increase dopaminergic activity, alter serotonin sensitivity, and shift neurotransmitter dynamics. That's not inherently bad, but it's not neutral either. It means if you're someone prone to mood disorders, the supplement that helps one person focus like a laser might leave you overstimulated, like caffeine on steroids. Now shift downward past the neurons, past the lungs, into the core of physicality, your muscles. This is where creatine's fame was born. When you lift a heavy weight or sprint at full speed, your body taps into something called the phosphocretine system, a rapid-fire energy source that lasts only seconds. Supplementing with creatine saturates this system. You don't just recover faster. You lift more, sprint harder, push further. And your muscles, in response, adapt, they grow, they repair, they evolve. But what's less discussed is how they grow. Yes, creatine increases muscle mass, but a large portion of that initial gain is water retention inside the muscle cells, a process called cell volumization. Think of it as inflating a balloon. The muscle swells, not just with fluid, but with nutrients, amino acids, and signaling molecules. It becomes an anabolic environment primed for protein synthesis and hypertrophy. This isn't just cosmetic. A hydrated muscle is a healthier muscle. It resists breakdown. It heals faster. It performs longer. Yet for all the muscle-boosting glory, there's another side of the coin, the kidneys. 
Here's where the myths and fears live. Creatine will destroy your kidneys. It'll clog your system. It's toxic. These statements echo in locker rooms, forums, even some doctor's offices. But what does science actually say? Creatine is metabolized into creatinine, a waste product filtered by your kidneys. Elevated creatinine in the blood is often a red flag in medical exams, suggesting kidney dysfunction. But here's the twist. Creatinine levels rise naturally when you take creatine. Even if your kidneys are functioning perfectly, it's a false flag. And many doctors, unless they're well-versed in sports nutrition, might misinterpret that. Multiple peer-reviewed studies, including long-term ones over five years, have shown no evidence of kidney damage in healthy individuals taking recommended doses of creatine. The key word is healthy. If you already have compromised kidney function diabetes, hypertension, nephropathy, creatine might not be wise. It's not that creatine causes kidney failure. It's that pre-existing kidney dysfunction can make processing extra creatine risky. And then there's dosage. Most people overdose without realizing. They load 5, 10, even 15 grams per day for weeks without breaks. The science says you don't need that. A simple 3 to 5 gram dose daily after a short loading phase, if at all is sufficient to saturate your muscles and support your brain. Anything beyond that is just extra strain on your filtration system. Still. The real danger with creatine isn't the compound itself. It's the culture around it, the assumption that more is better. The neglect of hydration, which is critical since creatine pulls water into muscles. The stacking of creatine with caffeine, stimulants, or sketchy pre-workouts. The teenagers downing it like candy with no understanding of their developing systems. These aren't biochemical risks, they're human ones. And yet, for all the panic and confusion, Creatine remains one of the most studied, safest, and effective supplements in the world. Not just for athletes, but for the elderly trying to maintain muscle mass and prevent falls. For those with depression, brain fog, or chronic fatigue. For vegetarians needing cognitive support. For post-surgical patients trying to recover strength. The applications go beyond the gym and deep into clinical medicine, aging research, and neuroprotection. In fact, some researchers believe creatine could one day be used to support recovery from traumatic brain injury, stroke, or even certain types of neurodegenerative diseases. That's not speculation, it's supported by animal studies, early human trials, and a growing curiosity among neurologists and geriatric specialists. One study on children with creatine transporter deficiency, a rare genetic disorder, found that supplementing creatine led to profound improvements in motor control and cognition. It's not a cure, but it's a key. But here's the wildest part. Creatine's power isn't limited to what it gives. It's also about what it prevents. Muscle atrophy, cognitive decline, metabolic slowdown. When your cells have energy, they fight better, heal better, think better. That's the real secret, not strength or aesthetics, but resilience. So what's the verdict? Should you take creatine? If you're healthy, active, and want better mental and physical performance, the evidence is heavily in favor. But start smart, hydrate aggressively, skip the mega doses. Take it consistently, creatine works through accumulation, not single hits. And be patient, the magic builds slowly, then suddenly. If you have kidney issues or medical concerns, talk to a doctor, preferably one who understands the supplement landscape. Not all physicians do. Bring them the studies, advocate for yourself. Because in a world of misinformation, Clarity is your greatest defense. Creatine isn't just a sports supplement. It's a story about energy, potential, and the unseen mechanics of human biology. It's about brain fog that lifts, muscle loss that reverses, aging that slows. It's about a molecule that touches nearly every cell in your body, but somehow still sits in the shadow of protein powders and testosterone boosters. Now you know. Now you can decide. Not based on hype, not based on fear, but based on truth.